than the members. And uh, last week Sunday, we talked about understanding the voice of the Holy Spirit. Do you remember? Yeah. God bless you, ma. And I told us that the Holy Spirit can use, uh, can speak to us the early stage of us being born again. As we grow, the Holy Spirit speaks to us through what? The inner witness. We talked about the inner witness. And we, I explained the inner witness as inner knowing. You know, a conviction from within. Inner peace. When God wants you to do something, you know, and there's this peace of mind you have. When he wants you to, to flee from something, there is this uh, unsettlement you have in your mind. You know, we talked about that. And I also told you about the word, the spectacular way that God speaks. You remember? I said the spectacular way, uh, the categories of the spectacular is uh, dreams, vision, prophecy, audible voice, and so on like that. That God does not always speak with the spectacular. He loves to speak to us, relate with us as children of God using the inner witness. That's the Holy Spirit in us, a gentle inner witness. At times you may not hear a voice. I told you last week Sunday that it may just be inner peace, inner rest, inner doubt, inner fear, things like that. So today we are going to continue. Let's look at this morning. Four reasons God use spectacular method to speak to his children why will god use the spectacular why because somebody will say ah ah pastor uh, somebody got a dream about me somebody gave a prophecy i saw a vision about myself now i've told you last week god does not always speak using the spectacular so if you are here you are the type you say ah, pastor i don't always get dreams so pastor i don't always hear the voice it's just occasionally you know, Joyce Mea said in one of her messages, if God is speaking to you every time, it means that you are making mistakes. That's why he has to be correcting you. He said, but if you are following the leading of the Lord and doing his will, you won't hear his voice every time. Hello? He said, you won't hear his voice every time because you are at the center of his will. So if you see somebody that is always, God is always speaking to, according to Joyce Mea's research, and I've com I combine it, where I'm from. I read, I listened to Joseph Mayers, I read um, Reverend Doug Heward Mills. He too wrote a book about hearing God. I read this book and he also said the same thing, that God does not always see you speak using the spectacular every time. You know, as we, are, we have now in today's generation, we have people that we close their eyes and pray and after five minutes they will see vision for everybody. Ah, Auntie Kemi, ah, Mori Yuke, Nebajui, ah, Auntie, Auntie, uh, Ayomide, Mori, ah, Dublin, Mori Wajui, ah, Daddy from Podakot, I saw, I saw you in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Holland. Auntie, I saw you in India. You know, under five minutes of praying, you have seen for everybody. Don't be carried away. God does not always speaks, uh, speak using the spectacular ways. Now, but I will show you four reasons why he speaks to us using spectacular ways. And we are going to confirm it from scriptures. Hallelujah. Let's just use these scriptures to start. John chapter 16. That was where we started to last week. 12 to 15. I use this one to show you that we, are, we serve a speaking God. Our God is not there for dumb. John chapter 16 from verse 12 to verse 15. We serve a speaking God. I say again, I read. I, I still have many things to say to you. This is Jesus speaking. But you cannot bear them now, which means you don't have the maturity to bear what I'm about to tell you. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will what? He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will tell you things to come. He will guide you into all truth. Let's move on. We stop at 15. He will not glorify, he will, sorry, he will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. He will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Verse 15. Verse 15. All things that the Father has are mine, therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. You know why I told you this last week? I told you that the Holy Spirit will not tell you anything that contradicts the written word. You know, I told you last week. The Holy Spirit will not tell you anything. So if you are hearing any a mysterious message and it contradicts the Bible, the written word, this is God's manual. If it contradicts this one, it shows you that it is not from God. 
Now, that's why I told us last week that every child of God, you must develop a very personal uh, uh, a relationship with your Bible. The more understanding of the word of God you have, the more it becomes difficult for the devil to deceive you. So we serve a speaking God. Let's move further. Read again Acts 27, 25, 21 to 25. Acts 27. We are still confirming it. We have a speaking God. Acts 27 from verse 21. But after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them, you know, I told you this one last week too, and said, men, you should have listened to me and not have sailed to Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. You will have listened to me. Verse 22. Verse 22. Verse 22. And now I urge you to think heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the sheep. Verse 23. Look at the spectacular way. For there stood by me this night, can you see? An angel of the, of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve. Now, this is spectacular. God does not always speak like this. When he speaks like this, he speaks for a purpose. I'll be showing you those four purposes as we go on. Hallelujah. Now, another one again, confirm more. Acts chapter 9, 11 and 12. So this one that Paul saw, he said, he stood by me. This is a vision. This is what we call open vision. Now look at 9 chapter 11, uh, Acts 9, 11 and 12. So the Lord said to me, arise and go to the street, called Street, and inquire of the house of Judah, for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. Can you see? This is spectacular. Now who was God speaking to? Ananias. So the Lord said, uh, I've taken this, he's praying right now. Verse 12, show me verse 12. Show me verse 12. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Can you see? Another spectacle. Saul got a vision. And while Ananias was at home praying, he also got a vision. So whenever God chooses to speak to you in these forms, he chooses it for four reasons. Number one, when the message involves something very important. When God has a very important message to you, you know what he does? He will now decide to use the spectacular way to speak to you. Now, when the message, you know, the, first, the, the one that every Christian understands, the normal one is what we, I call the inner witness. He will convince you from your heart. But when God has a very, very important message, he doesn't want you to lose that message. He wants you to understand the message he's speaking to you about. You know what he will do? He will now decide to use the spectacular I remember one great servant of God of blessed memory now. He was to travel that morning, that morning, to go and audit the account of their church in Lagos. The general overseer sent him, I mean, the general evangelist sent him, go and audit the account. They are building the church in Lagos and the church is not advancing, but money is going in. Go and audit the account and find out. He slept that night and woke up in the morning. He said he got a dream. And what was the dream? He said he saw that the ground opened and some people were pulling his legs into the grave. And he woke up. The moment he woke up, he told his wife the dream. The wife said, honey, don't go for this journey. Ah, he said, but it's my general overseer that sent me to go and audit the account. I must go. The wife said, don't go, my, my dear. Do you know that he went for the journey? While he was auditing the account, we were told they served him food and juice. He drank the food and juice, and from there he landed in the hospital. After some days, he died of poison. Did God not speak? He spoke. When God sees that the message is urgent, that's why every child of God, when God gives you spectacular message, pay attention. He doesn't always speak like that. When the message is urgent, he will show you. Hallelujah. Go search scriptures, and you will see that if it is not very important, God won't use the spectacular method when it is, if it is not important. Now, I will share two or three examples again. Now, in the Bible, the Bible says, and uh, Pharaoh slept, and he got a dream. He said, in that dream, I saw fat cows, and I saw thin cows, and I saw fat cows being swallowed by the thin cows. And each of those cows were seven, seven, seven fat, seven thin. And when I woke up, I didn't understand. I slept again and I saw plants being planted, you know, and some were fat, seven, 
and another seven were thin, and the thin swallowed the fat, and he woke up. And he was bothered in his mind. What kind of dream is this? Go and look for interpreters for me. Go and look for interpreters for me. Go and look for interpreters for me. Now, when they eventually found Joseph, remember that story. Joseph, as they told him the story, the first thing Joseph said is, the reason why this dream came twice is because God is showing you that it is something that is not reversible. Something that will definitely happen. He now said, okay, what is the meaning? He said, those seven fat cows, you know what the meaning? He said, it means that there's going to be seven years of abundance. Okoma wagon. He said, those seven thin cows, he's showing that, ah, there's going to be seven years of scarcity. He said, but you notice that the fat cows were swallowed. He said, the scarcity will be so much that the world will not even remember that there was a time of abundance before. Then they now asked Joseph, what do we do? He said, God showed you this dream to prepare you. So you know what we are going to do? Let us begin to build storage, storehouses. Let's begin to look for materials to preserve the abundance. So in the days of the abundance, as they were gathering, one over five, every one over five, they will separate. Every one over five, they will separate. Every one over five, they separated it for seven years. They preserved seven years. And lo and behold, according to the dream, the second, second seven years came. All the people in the world that didn't have anybody to dream any dream, that didn't have anybody to get any message from God, started to experience scarcity. And what happened? They were now coming to Egypt to buy. Praise the Lord. Now, what am I saying? When the message is important, God will decide to speak to you in spectacular ways. That's why vision can come. That's why dream can come. That's why prophecy can come. Now, can you imagine if nobody saw anything about the seven years of abundance? What do you think they would do? They would waste the abundance and suffer in the scarcity. See, I hear. So, whenever God is speaking in spectacular way, it is because the message is very, very important. I read on again. When Peter noted, sorry, needed to minister to the household of Colinius in Acts chapter 11, that one is very long, 1 to 18, but I'll be narrating it as it will be showing us. What happened? After Jesus had left, the disciples did not bother to relate with the Gentiles because Gentiles are known as sinners, unbelievers, people that don't know God. And Israel believed that Jesus came to die only for them. So they believed that the salvation that Jesus brought was only for Israel. It was so worse in those days that if an unbeliever should touch an Israelite, if a Gentile should touch an Israelite, that Israel will believe that, ah, I'm defiled. But they must hear the gospel. You know what God now did? In Acts chapter 10, first. There's no time to read, but I will explain. The first thing God did was to show Peter a vision. He said, I was waiting to eat my afternoon food because I was hungry. While they were preparing the food, I was praying, and I took a nap. He didn't sleep deep. That's what they call trance. It's different from deep sleep. I'll be telling you about dreams in the second service. It's not deep sleep. You won't even know whether you slept. In fact, if you're in a trance, you'll be thinking you didn't sleep. It will look like one minute, but the message will be like, like 10 minutes message. Peter now saw a sheet placed in front of him and all kind of animals that God said to them in the Old Testament that defiled. He saw them, old, bad. And God now said, Peter, kill and eat. He said, no, I cannot kill and eat you. These animals are defiled. God said, don't call what I call clean, unclean. The Bible says while he was thinking, the sheet was removed from his eyes. And an angel said, some men are coming, follow them. Now, in Acts 11, when those men now came, he followed them. As he got to Colinius' house, ah, these are Gentiles. Ah, these are Gentiles. I can't do anything with Gentiles. When you get to go and read that Acts 11, very funny. Peter reluctantly preached to them. Talk about Jesus. But while he was preaching, the Bible says the Holy Ghost came on them. That was when Peter now agreed that, ah, now that the Gentiles have been given what we have, can you see? Now that God has given us, given them what we also have, let's not stop them from being baptized. Oh yeah, let's go and baptize them. Now, 
After that, the Bible says the other disciples now called Peter in Acts 11 and started to query him. Peter, you are backslided. Peter, you are backslide. Peter, you are backslide. Ah, why do you say I backslide? We saw you in the house of Colinius the Gentiles. Ah, the Gentile. Peter, you are backslide. You know, there are, there are ways that some religious Christians can criticize you. That's what I always tell people. Christianity is not a religion. It's a way of life. An encounter with God. If you see religious Christians, ah, they will criticize you for everything. As they were criticizing Peter, Peter now told them, he said, I got this vision. I was still thinking about the vision. And I asked God, said, some men will be looking for you. Follow them. And I followed them. And when I got there, I was merely preaching to them just to escape. And I noticed that they started speaking in tongues. You know, after he said what he said, the disciples that were condemning him now started to say, ah, we didn't know that God is behind it. We thought you went to the Gentile house. Can you imagine? When there is an urgent, important information, God will decide to use the spectacular to speak to you. Hallelujah. When Jesus, our Lord, as a baby, was to be carried out of Jerusalem into Egypt, how did God speak? The spectacular. It was in a dream that Joseph saw an angel. And the angel said, now, carry this baby boy and run to Egypt. Because some people seek his life. As they passed through the borders, the announcement of, uh, of uh, Herod came. Every baby boy that has been born at such and such time must be killed. But thank God for spectacular message. That's why you must not joke with spectacular message. Because you know last week, my wife and my children were discussing about a staff there. That was, that was employed. And my wife and my children were discussing, ah, this person, God has not shown us anything about this person. I wasn't there. My wife said, I shall have not seen anything. My children too said they have not seen anything. I didn't know. I didn't know what they were discussing. But I got home that night. And I slept. And they know I don't always get dreams. But once my dream come, just like that prophet, legit me. <laughs> It's one of my favorite comedians. You know, I now saw in that dream, I saw this lady, and God showed me some things. When I woke up, I told my wife, and I got a dream about this particular lady. This is what I saw. My wife screamed. Anyola, Anyola, what were we discussing? Where were, what were we discussing? Yesterday and two days ago, God has shown that you. This is what I need to know. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whenever there's a spectacular a way of God speaking to you, it shows that the message is what? Of importance. When God speaks using the spectacular method, then the message is what? It's important. Number two. Second reason. We're only taking four. God uses the spectacular method when he sees that every other means of reaching you has failed. I come again. God uses the spectacular method when he sees that every other means of reaching you has failed. Now, take note of my language. I do not mean that God fails. But what I mean is that at times God speaks to us and we choose not to listen. There's one of our daughters, you know, she used to be a member of our church. Anytime I see her going around begging with a child, she has a child. She'll be going around begging. She does not have any place to stay. I remember how she was saying because of my age. Look at me. Age I've gone. Any brother that come, I will, I, will, I will make sure that I will get pregnant for the person to tie the person down. And I remember I told her, if you tie your ne yourself to the neck of a man, it does not guarantee marriage you. I use every means to talk to this lady. She didn't agree. So she went to get pregnant for this for a young man. The man pretended to be a pastor. Now, and after their marriage, they were living from one, one house to another house, from one place to another place, till they moved to the man's sister's house. Then after some time, she had misunderstanding with the man's sister, and they chased her and her only child out of the house. And the husband said, there's nothing we can do. And Timmy, Tilly, me tell you. My sister have chased you and your daughter. His own daughter, there's nothing I can do about it. 
So and she has been sleeping. So anytime I see her going around, ah, I say, and God spoke. Humans are stubborn. I was telling my wife and children, may the spirit of goats not possess us. There are these goats that enter my uh, compound. They've eaten almost all the flour. So I always target them. I put stones somewhere. So this particular day, they entered. I gather my stone. And I'm a straight shooter. As it wanted to run, I threw this very big stone. He hit the goat, small goat on the head. It somersaulted. Stood up again, somersaulted again. Got to the gate, didn't know the road, did like this. And I said to myself, he won't come again. After three hours, I now told myself, may the spirit of a goat not possess man. Yesterday, I took uh, something again. You know what? He now went to the compound, even to the backyard. But the thing is that once he sees me, it will run. But it will return. Some humans are like that. You know, God must have spoken. Was it not? Uh, it was on Friday. They told me about the death of a man of God. Oh, do me. They said this man was invited to come and preach in Abel Kuta. He did everything possible to get transport to Abel Kuta. He didn't get. He tried to look for somebody to borrow him. He couldn't get anyone to borrow him. Instead of him to now say, Lord, why? If God is sending you, he should finance you. I don't trouble myself about ministry. I always say, if you have called me, I didn't send myself. Abi, if I send my staffs out, I give them transport. At times, I say, I come and go to bank, and I forget to give him transport. I was still making jest of him on Friday. He'll be doing like this. He will go like this. Ah, I will come, I understand. Oh, yeah, come and take transport. Because I sent him. When God wants to send you, and a lot of borrowing is getting involved, watch it. This man did everything, not knowing that he will die in motor accident. He looked for who to borrow. They said, finally, he now got somebody to borrow him. Money to Abel Kuta. He went there. He ministered. As he was coming back, he had a terrible accident. His spinal cord was broken. They took him to the hospital. It was then the hospital. The doctor told him that he has spinal cord issue. It was that news that killed him. The pastor that was not telling was now saying, "Ah, alone there he too. Only to do why over why ya wolo wote. Me no me no ni." This is my own policy. I always say anything I pray about, I praise God about, I apply wisdom about, and it doesn't work, I leave it. That's my own principle. I've prayed about it, I've fasted about it, I've applied wisdom about it, I've even danced before God about it, and there's no change. The late Archbishop Benson also said, if you are called to pray for the dead, and you are saying, comfort! Comfort and refuse to comfort. Tell him to go forward. So most times, humans are very stubborn. Despite all the messages. So when God now sees that, ah, and I love this person, no. I've done everything to show him or her that this path you are taking is not a right path. You know what God will do? God will now choose to send a spectacular Remember the case of Ahab, how all these prophets were prophesying the same thing. Ah, Ahab, go to battle, you will win. You will conquer. They now said they should go and call Prophet Micah. And when this prophet came, he said, sir, you will go, you will win. Ahab said, I know you. Your own prophecy is always different. Because I know all these prophets that are on my salary, on my uh, payroll. I know them. They are only here because of my money. Tell me the truth. He said, sir, I see you dead. I see the army of Israel scattered. You know what the king said? Stubborn woman means. The king said, I know that you don't like me. He was telling Jehoshaphat, I told you that his prophecy will always be against. Lock him up till I return. Then the prophet said, if you return, 
know that God has not called me. So God uses the spectacular method when he sees that every other means of reaching you fails. When he sees that every other means of reaching you fails, he uses the spectacular method. Now, listen. Every child of God, and I want you to learn from this. Don't be so much carried away by anything. I wrote something down here. I want to look for it so that I can read it. Hallelujah. I wrote here, don't try to act like a superhuman. God can only protect and provide for you when you are within his will. Outside of God's will, you do not have a protection. Either of God's will, you do not have provision. Since we have been running ministry, God, all the means I've been using are the means of God's provision to me. Even when we had to use some of our uh, microfinance, they are members of our church. They will come, Papa, and we can use this uh, soft loan to do this thing. So, eh, should they should they make convenient? Eh, eka work, eka work offering wa ka uba shima maso. Kose eti mumu wa rami loso. They will work the thing out by themselves. They know how to remove it. The mini kika tiche project starvation. Now, don't forget, there is no superhuman anywhere. See, after me, there is no superhuman anywhere. So don't try to act like a superhuman. God can only protect and provide for you when you are in his will. When you are outside of his will, he can't protect you. So when he now sees that he has done everything, when we had crisis in our marriage, um, when I talk about crisis, trusting God for fruit of the womb, first three years we didn't have any child in our house. I went back to the God that told me to marry my wife. Father, what is happening? I want Doctor Masoka and the B. Doctors are saying we can't have a child. Daddy, what happened? And God gave me instead of him to answer me, he gave me names. Eniola. Oyola. Oriola. Doctor Lali be more there for me to come on meta. And I wrote them down. Do you know that if I went into marriage without his consent, or maybe I prayed and prayed and God said, Don't go ahead, and I go in, sir, ma, who will I call? Ulua, ma be more. Ulua, out here, need down. As I'm talking to you now, Apu is ministering at uh, the Ayegum branch of our church. 5.30 this morning, he has sent a message to me. I'm aware he's there. If anybody called me now and said, police arrest Apu, and I say, where? They say at uh, Akubo. I won't show up. You know I won't show up? I don't know what took him to Akobo. But if they say police arrest him at, at uh, Ayegun or Urita, I will drive down there straight. Why? Because I sent him. The same thing, that's God's way of re- relating. So when God says that, ah, I've done everything, I've spoken in, I've, I've, I've used inner witness to speak to my daughter, she didn't listen, I've revealed several things, she didn't listen, he can decide to send the servant. Sister, or not every year old thou, or sister, that is the will of God. Do. You know, one of our sisters, I'll try to wrap it so that you won't know. The person she was supposed to marry came to us and told us, Papa, and when he shared what he saw, that's the first time in our church I had to call the sister. Sister, this is what this brother saw. And sir, sister, this vision. It's authentic. Go and pray about it. She didn't even turn back to answer me. She said, sir, I cannot present this kind of brother to my father. I didn't say, look at their parents. Go and pray. He said, sir, 
I cannot present this kind of brother to my father. It's not possible. So I told the brother, go and talk to her. The brother said she washed him down. And I told him, bro, you better pray. The person that God has shown you has not agreed. God always have a David that will replace his son. When I asked the sister, why did you refuse? He said, sir, it does not look like someone that can have a child, that can impregnate a lady with his condition. When the, the, this, this, he now came by, he says, I have prayed, and there's this sister in church, I don't know. The Spirit of God is just talking to me about her. So I called the other one too. Sister, go and pray about this, bro. He too, she too said, ah, sir, this bro, with his condition, bro, there's nothing God cannot do. And she has been in a relationship, follow this story, she has been in a relationship, a sinful relationship. She has been coming to her church to be praying that she should be pregnant for that person. When she now told me about it, that she wants to be pregnant, I said, are you married? I preached to her, minister salvation to her, she got born again. And I told her, pack out of that boy's house. The reason why that boy left her was because she was not pregnant. But when she agreed to this brother and they got married, I had to be begging them to stop giving back to children. The one that now refused has not given back to today. It's the person she got married to. Is she, is she enjoying the marriage of her choice? She's not. You know, people don't understand that when we pass us, we, there are so many things we can't say. If we say it, we cause trouble. But when it is happening, I do Because human, we have this stubborn skin. So when God speaks with the spectacular, it is because at times he must have spoken through several methods and will refuse to hear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's confirm that. Acts chapter 13, 1 and 2. Acts 13, 1 and 2. See the spectacular that came to uh, Barnabas and Saul. Let's read Acts chapter 13, 1 and 2. 13, 1 and 2. I'm waiting. 13, 1 and 2, not 12. Acts 13. Thank you. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, many who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. That's Saul that became Paul. Now look at Vasu. And they minister, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Spirit said, now this is prophecy. Now, separate to me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have I have called them, which means God had called them, but they were not ready to agree to go for the assignment. They weren't ready. So God had to use the spectacular means. While everybody was praying, hey, one of the leaders just prophesied. Paul, where are you? Come on. Silas, where are you? God has given you a special assignment. Go! The Bible says, if you go and read through that chapter 13, as they went, they went to a city to preach. God used them to do exploit. Let's take number three because of my time. Third reason why God uses the, the spectacular. God at times speaks in spectacular ways when he decides to show mercy to stubborn people. <laughs> God at times speaks in spectacular ways when he decides to show mercy to stubborn people. You know, uh, I don't know, I don't know, but let me just say this one out of practical experience. At times I used to feel that, it's just a feeling, I've not yet confirmed it in scriptures, that God loves some people more than some people. I don't know whether you can, you have, sincerely speaking. <laughs> Satma, is, sincerely speaking, I used to feel it too. You see somebody that will live a concentrated life from foundation. 
and they will say you have fibroid. You have cancer. And you will see somebody that have aborted all her life. And when it's time to marry, marry pastor. And begin to give her to children. That's one mystery I will ask God when I get to heaven. Sincerely speaking, I, I used to feel it. Do you know that some people want disobedience to take their life? And some will have several disobedience. God will still be sending people to them. But you know what Paul said when he was speaking about this? He said, who are you to judge God? He said, for the scripture says, I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. <laughs> to whom he chooses. You know, I read that Romans. He now said, do you know that I raised Pharaoh for the purpose of displaying my power? And I raised Moses for the purpose of displaying my wonders. Ah. So, at times, out of love for God, when you become so stubborn, he has shown you, and he doesn't want you to perish. Now, look at one example. John 21, let's go there. It's, re it's long, but we are going to read it. 3 to 15. John 21, 3 to 15. I wrote here, while they are bringing up the scriptures, there are stubborn believers who may still choose their own way despite several warnings. Now, look at this. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. Who is Simon Peter? Simon Peter is one of the disciples. In fact, Jesus told him, you are the rock. Upon thee are we live the foundation of the church. But when they arrested Jesus, what did he do? He told other disciples, me, oh, I never threw away my net. These three and a half years that I was following Jesus, I, I, I hid it. I am going back to the fishing business. Let's read on. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we are going with you also. He even went, led others astray too. They went out and immediately got into the boat. And they, uh, sorry, and that night they caught nothing. Verse 4. But when the morning had come, come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know what it was. Sorry, that it was Jesus. He still came after them. Five. Then Jesus said to, to them, children, have you any food? They answered him, no, we don't have food. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast and now they were not able to draw it because of the multitude of the fish. Look at verse 7. Therefore, that disciple hmm, whom Jesus loved said to Peter, Peter, ah, Peter, have you forgotten this miracle? That day, it is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and plunged into the sea. He jumped into the sea. Let's go on. Let's go on. But the other disciples came in the, in the little boat, for they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits dragging the net with fish. Verse 9. Then, as soon as they had come to the land, they saw a fire of coal there and fish laid on it and bread. Verse 10. You know, they've not eaten. There was no food. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Let's move on. Let's move on. We don't have all the time. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land full of fish and the 153. Although Although there was so many, there were so many, their nets did not break. Move on, 12. Jesus said to them, come and eat. Come and eat breakfast. Yet none of them, they are asking, who are you? They were wondering. Knowing that it was the Lord, they were afraid because they themselves know that they have left ministry. Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them. And likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Look at 15. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than this? 
you have not left this fishing business. I say I want to use you. Can you see the spectacular message? Why somebody had the call of God once? He didn't answer. God, give somebody else the calling. How many times did Elijah complain? Lord, they have killed everyone. I'm the only one left. God said, go to Shephat. There's a young man whose name is Elisha. Hand over the mantle to him. But this one, even rejected Jesus with a curse. He said, he's one of them. I swear to God, I don't know. I swear. Huh? If I ever know him. <laughs> but Jesus decides, this. I know he's stubborn, but I will show him the message. And do you know that after this spectacular message, Peter didn't backslide again. May you, not, may you not fall out of the love of God. Say big amen to that. So God had to use the spectacular to draw Peter back. Another person that, ex- that enjoyed this is Balaam. God had to use the mouth of the donkey to speak to him. Ah, ah, ah. Can we take number four? I have a, wow, well, five minutes more. Fourth reason why God used spectacular method. God may speak in spectacular way when there is an urgent message for either his church or any of his children around you. Yeah. God may speak in spectacular ways when there is an urgent message either for his church or for any of his child around you. You know, God at times does that. When he sees that, ah, somebody needs a message. Somebody is about to commit a blunder. What do I do to save that person? And that person did not understand what I'm saying. That's where God uses, can use a spectacular to send somebody to you. Sometimes, not too long, I was discouraged about ministry. Completely discouraged. I didn't. I was just saying to myself, maybe I should just me, my wife, and children. Canada. I'm not too old to go and start life all over again. After all, Abraham started at 75. I'm telling you a true life story. Not too long from now. And while I was making up my mind. Because, you know, my first disciple, if I want to make up my mind, I must make up my mind well to convince my first disciple, which is my wife. If she's convinced, the children doesn't have issue. I know I was discouraged. I was looking at the life of most of my ministers, looking at some of our people, even some of our people that God has blessed that do not even care about our ministry. You know, I was just... I was down. And I pick up my phone. And it was Bishop T.D. Jakes that was preaching about his experience. He said, do you know, there was a time I made up my mind I don't want to do ministry anymore because I was hot about people's attitude. That night I told myself, I'm going to church on Sunday to close down the church. Then I had a call in the morning. Somebody said, sir, I was about committing suicide this morning. And I saw your post of one of your messages. He said he posted that message online many years ago. That this is not the time to die. He said, and that message brought me back to life. I took your number and I decided to call you. He said, and he was about quitting. Because some of you don't know that your testimony can go a long way. To encourage God's servant. So if you don't know. So if you don't know that your support can go a long way, your financial support to encourage God's servant. Do you know that he, after listening to that message of TDJ, my fire was restored. God can use spectacle, he could send somebody. And when he's doing that at times, is that there's an urgent message, but you are not catching it. Let's confirm that from scripture. Acts chapter 21, 
10 and 11. Acts 21, 10 and 11. And we stayed many, many days. A certain prophet named Agapos came down from Judah. And when he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his hands and feet, and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. It was an urgent message for Paul. It's just like, you know, the, I know one of the reasons why some of us don't want to believe in prophets, prophecies, and this is because I know they have bastardized it now. People have commercialized it now. There are so many people that are not prophets that call themselves prophets now. But I know that one of the errors that the end time church is having is the error of everybody wanting to become Jew. There is calling and there is spiritual gifts. You can have the gift of prophecy. It does not make you a prophet. You can have the gift of administration. Go and read Corinthians. It does not make you a pastor. You can administer very well. But today we have this geo mentality. And one of the reasons, too, of this geo mentality, I will still blame even we that God has called the geos. At times, it's because at times we don't pay attention to the need of the people. Because some of these gifted people's, people to have need. But the church is not paying attention to them. So because they now feel that since every every attention is on our Jew, just But sincerely speaking, it is making us not to enjoy the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the church of now. That's why there are several errors. But I must tell you the truth, there are prophetic messages. Ah, I remember one. Let me tell you this one as we, as we round up. This one happened about, uh, ah, that should be about 10 or 11 years ago. I wanted to go to Lagos. Because you know you about no people, you know how you used to do. If they combine all your offerings together, it's not up to one offering of one person in Lagos. Somebody was talking to me three weeks ago. I said, we are, we are gathering together to gather 20 million in three years. He said, sir, I didn't hear you. He said, what do you say you are gathering? I said, 20 million in three years. He said, three years? That's what we get in one service. The church is in the Kedja. He said, that's what we get in one service. I said, when that three years is not sure. <laughs> so I was planning. I made up my mind. Many years ago, I'm telling you about 10 years or 11 years ago. And I went to visit Reverend Pierre for a while. As I entered his office, you know, she alone was like, he said it's in Yoruba. Man, lay cool. ah. I was looking at her. He said, don't go to Lagos. I just entered his office. He said, servant of the most high God. Don't go to Lagos. Oh. Lagos will call you by itself when the time comes. He has not seen me before. We've not spoken about, we've not talked about anything before. I just went to see him, to invite him for a program. You know what? I just forgot about the issue of Lagos straight. Maybe, like, maybe I will have died in Lagos. So there's a spectacular message. Don't the ones that somebody will say, I'm in Songo, Uri Oke Songo ni Mowa, Uluani Kima Bola du Boi, Nio Muleye, but Mowa Debe, Uluani, Oya Gu Boi, Ebe Oya, no, 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 that, that's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about a spectacle. Are you blessed this morning? Have you learned something? Put your hands together for the Lord. So those are the reasons. Now let me summarize. Apart from these reasons, every child of God should develop the simple speaking ways of the Holy Spirit, such as inner witness, scriptural pointers, message from preachings and the likes. Now, what do I mean? 
apart from these four reasons that God uses spectacular, hear me, every child of God, develop yourself in, number one, inner witness. Pay attention to the witnessing of the Holy Spirit. Two, develop scriptural pointers. What do I mean by scriptural pointers? When you study the word and it applies to you, follow it. The third one, as a child of God, develop yourself to hear God when preachings are going on. You know, there's a gentle voice of the Holy Spirit that will direct the message to you. The pastor doesn't know what you are going through, but the message comes to your situation. Pick it as God's voice and every other means. But this spectacular, God uses it for, because of these four reasons. So in the second service, we'll be talking about truths about dreams you should know as a child of God. Because dreams is one of the ways by which God speaks to his children. Are you blessed? Have you learned something? Are you sure?